Next, we're going to go to the IMDb document. Remember, the IMDb were the movie reviews. And so this is a task in document classification. And uh, again, Keras has this data set. We're going to use a dictionary of size 10,000 words. Okay. And if you recall, the way things work is we build a bag of words model where we score the, each document for whether or not the words in our dictionary appear in the document. It's a binary vector. And we're going to limit it to the 10,000 most commonly used words in the dictionary. Okay. And when you extract the data set, we can straight away indicate that and it'll truncate each little review to just using those words. This third line here is, is a shortcut using a, a kind of a sign operator that uh, takes the IMDB data structure and builds up a train and test list in the, and also X and Y. So these are shortcuts we learned from the Keras, the Keras book. Let's have a look at the, the indices for the first 12 words in the first document. So there they are. So the words are indicated by positions in the dictionary of 12,000, okay? So if you want to actually see the words, we write a decode function. And the decode function needs to take into account certain padding words like start and stop and unused. And so there's some details here. We won't go into it yet now, but you can read more details in the lab. And that tells you the beginning of, of that review. So it translates the, the numbers into the actual words. So this form was just brilliant casting, location, scenery, story, direction, everyone. So it doesn't look like English, but remember we limited ourselves to this restricted dictionary. And so now we uh, write a function to one on hot encode each document in a list of documents and return a binary matrix in sparse matrix format. So remember, this. what this is going to do is, for each document, it's going to give you a binary matrix, and it's just going to be zeros or ones according to which words were present in the dictionary. You see here in the last line, we made a call to the sparse matrix function, because this matrix is mostly zeros, right? Because any document only has, if the document's got, you know, 50 words or 100 words or whatever, there's only going to be 100, at most 100 ones in the document, in, in, in the sparse vector, and the rest are going to be zeros. Mm -hmm. We use a matrix, capital matrix package and the sparse matrix function to store this matrix in, in a sparse format. And so this code here is setting things up to do that. Next, we, um, we use the one hot encode function it's telling it that there's, there's a, a dictionary of, of length 10,000. And uh, so we'll just run that code. So all the components of X-Ring get one hot encoded. Is that right? Yeah. So this makes these, these matrices that are... I see. I'm sorry. I got a little lost in, in the code here. So this is just a function to do the one hot encoding, mm -hmm. right? and it returns a sparse matrix. And here we run one hot on the training and the test. Yeah. And so we see that the dimension of the X that we have out is 25,000 by 10,000. And if we look at the fraction of non-zeros, we see it's 1.3%. We're going to sample a... Um, a validation set of size 2000, just so that we can monitor progress and, and select tuning parameters. So first, we'll fit a lasso logistic regression using a GlimNet and evaluate performance on the validation data. And we'll, we'll plot its um, accuracy as a function of the shrinkage parameter lambda. And GlimNet will take advantage of the sparse matrix format. Because um, this is a pretty massive X matrix, but Glimnet knows how to take advantage of the of the sparsity. It just knows because X train is, it, it, you don't tell it, it, just, it figures it out. 
right? Yes. So if one had to look at the class of X train, you'd mm -hmm. see it would be a sparse matrix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should we do that? So let's see. Uh, what's it? X underscore matrix. MG matrix? Yeah, so I forget what these things, but it's a column sparse matrix and from the package matrix. Okay. So there's a call to GlimNet. We tell it to use a binomial because the response, remember, is the sentiment of the, of the document and it was, what was it, favorable or unfavorable? Yeah. yeah. And uh, we tell it not to standardize the matrix because the matrix, the features are all binary, so they, they're all in the same units. Then we predict on the, on the test data, or in this case, the validation data, and we compute the accuracy. So let's get that running. And it's done. And in this case, we just make a plot of, of the results and we see the performance on the validation data and it gets up to about 88%. Okay. Now we're going to fit a, a neural network and we'll use two hidden layers each with 16 units. Okay. So there's a specification. So this is starting to look familiar by now. And tell it the optimizer, we tell it the epochs, batch sizes, and so on. So this is a, just a standard two-layer neural network. Here it goes. What do we see there, Rob? We see overfitting pretty quick. Pretty quick overfitting, yeah. yeah. It, uh, it, it gets up to about 88, just over 88%, 89% accuracy mm. on, on the test data, but starts overfitting fairly quickly. Right. And we didn't have any dropout, I see. Maybe that we could have... We didn't have dropout. That could have uh, slowed the overfitting. Yeah. I do recall trying some dropout and other things here, but, you know, it didn't seem to make much difference. We've just shown the validation accuracy. We would also like to see the test accuracy. So I basically run the, the, the program again, but this time on the, using the test data and not the validation data. Um, I won't show that now. 